We are on 121, correct? Right. And should we start from the Rabbi Yossi Nami? Yeah, in him. Okay. What are we in the middle of talking about? Oh, uh, about the grass and the... And the, and the ink over the yeah. of Hashem's name and uh, and putting his hand putting your hand over. Yeah. Okay. The Rabbi Yossi Nami Zimnin Demishtale the Shakile, according to Rabbi Yossi too, one sometimes forgets and removes his hand. Ella. Idi kekemi hachinami, rather if there is a grass uh, available. Uh, this is so. So you can use the grass. With what are we dealing with here? La agemi to go after the grass. So, uh, oh, that's right. And because we should fulfill the mitzvah as soon as possible, we don't have. We shouldn't be waiting until until uh, the, the argument was. Why do I need to? Why do I need to become tahor so quickly? In which case, if I don't need to do it quickly, then uh, I can go and find grass. On the other hand, if there's a fixed time for it, then I should go and immediately and just cover it with my hand. Yes. Okay. by my opinion, what are we dealing with here? La adore agemi to go after the grass. Rabbanan savre rabbi Rabbi told, Sevilla bismana love mitta. Immersion at an appointed time is not a mitzvah. Um hadrina, and then one should go after the grass uh, because you can postpone. Rabbi Yossi Savar, Rabbi Yossi Hold, Sevilla bismana mitzvah. The law mahadrinan. Immersion at the appointed time is a mitzvah, meaning immerse as soon as you are able to. And one should not bother mucking around going after the grass. But Savar Rabbi Yossi, Vila, Vizmana Mitzvah, does Rabbi Yossi hold that immersion, uh, does he really hold that you immerse at the appointed time, that it's a mitzvah? But Tanya, we have a Baraisa. Hazava zava hametsora va hametsora at bo el nida utme me. Hazava zava metsora metsora at a man who cohabits with a nida and a person coming from a corpse. Vilatan bayom their immersion is by day. Nida the Yoledet Filatan Balayla. And a, a Nida, a woman who is, and a woman who has given birth, their immersion is at night. So what's this saying? Well, I, you know, what I'm saying the first part of this. Those who immerse in the day, they immerse at a designated time, even on Yom Kippur. Okay. But if a woman immerses at night, so this is Yom Kippur? Even on Yom Kippur. Even on Yom Kippur. Even on Yom Kippur. A man who does it on the day. Ah. A woman, a menstruating woman, or a woman who's had a child, uh, the proper time for her to do it is at night. Okay, um, so it's saying if it falls on Yom Kippur, do it on Yom Kippur. Whether yeah. it's virtually whether it's by day, whether it's by yeah. night, you have to do it at that time. Well, and you find there's time. a limitation. Okay, so oh, but I'll, numbers. 
Baal Keri, Tov of Halech, Kol Hayom Kulo, a man who experienced seminal mission, it says on Yom Kippur, immerses at any point during the entire day. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Min HaMincha Olamala, Eino Terechli Spol. From Mincha, if the emission is from after Mincha time, he need not emerge. And what are the hal- I'm curious about the halakot in this case. Sign of use thing. Sorry. We'll probably be using, well, we may be onto another volume by the <laughs> um, <laughs> Time for immersion. Everyone who is obligated to immerse in a literal bath must do so during the day. The exception to the rule are a menstruating woman and a woman who has given birth to immerse at night. Immersion on Yom Kippur. By the way, this is the halacha as it is now, mm. not necessarily it. Then, since it is a mitzvah to immerse oneself at the designated time, one may do so on Yom Kippur. If that day is the designated time for immersion, in contemporary times, the halacha of immersing at a designated time does not apply in most cases. Therefore, anyone required to immerse, including a menstruating woman, does not do so, does so after going to That's today's halakha. That's today's halakha. Hmm. <coughs> oh, I see. So it's a question. The question is, Rabbi Yossi says, from Mincha time onwards, he does not need to immerse. Hmm. Ahi Rabbi Yossi be Rabbi Yodahi. That is Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi Yehuda, who said um, it is sufficient for her, she, go, she immerses at the conclusion of all the possible times. Yeah. For immersion... Because uh, oh. there were some apparently who held that if a woman was uncertain... Yeah. She should wait. No, she should immerse every day of uncertainty oh. until such time as she was certain. She goes through all the different, jumps through all the different hoops. Yeah. I'm just going to get a. Uh... Alright, Mishnah. Nafri Shabbat. Nafri Shabbat Lechabot. So a Gentile who comes to extinguish. Mm-hmm. They, you're not allowed to say to him, extinguish it. Be'al hechabe, or and they're not allowed to say, oh, they're not allowed to say extinguish it, and they're not allowed to say do not extinguish it. Mipnei she'ein shvitacho alehen, because his resting is not their responsibility. Meaning, they will stop doing something and start doing something. Shabbat. There's no obligation to rest on Shabbat. Aval, katan shebel however, a Jewish minor who comes to extinguish, ein shamin law, they may not listen to him. And they don't mean they not listen to him. They don't allow him to carry out his Right, so he says, I'm going to extinguish it for you. Well, he, you can't a sign of going to extinguish it, whether it's for you or not. You don't let him go at it. You don't let him go at it. Mipnei she shvitata she shvitato alehem. Because his resting is their responsibility. Is my, a Jewish partner, the community responsibility. But I find interesting here is that it's a lay hen, which certainly is not the case. Maybe just the word katan in Nekeva. 
Gemara. That would be nice because the word not free. The not free? No. Yeah, it's too. There's some, obviously, some good action for it. Ah, you know what it is. Um, you're thinking in modern Hebrew. Yeah, I said in modern Hebrew. But Alei Hen is... Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ama Rabbi Ami. Is Leka Hitiru Lomar. In a fire. Uh, the sage has committed one to say... Anyone who extinguishes will not lose, or meaning they'll, what, they won't go unrewarded. So, if there is goyim around, you can call out anyone who puts out that fire. I don't lose fire. Right. Very good. That's it. Neymar Mesayale. Let us say the mission is to put Um So, Rabbi Yami would say. Nachri Sheba Lechabot Eino Mimlo Chabe Ve'al Techabe A Gentile is to extinguish, they may not say to him, extinguish, nor do not extinguish his mitzay She'ein Shemitato Alehen Because his resting is not their responsibility, so that's what the Mishnah said. Chabe Echu Delo Amrinan Lei It is uh, extinguish, meaning a command extinguish, that we may not tell him. But we could tell him, anyone who extinguishes will not lose. Oh, so now you can make an indirect inference, yeah. as opposed to yelling it out in the middle of the street. I and the lights haven't come on. End of Shabbat. And so they were standing in the door of the shul and a passing flat very by and one of the shul members said, Something's gone wrong with the lights. And the flat walked in, fixed the light on. Oh, that's working. Flips it off and works nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that actually. That's quite good. Ema <laughs> Seika, consider the end. It says, Al techaber lo amrin anle. We do not tell him, do not extinguish. The kol hamechaber eno matir nami lo amrin anle. But anyone who extinguishes will not lose. We may not tell him either. Ela meha leka lemishma mina. Rather, one cannot infer proof or disproof from this mishnah. Meaning, whether we are allowed to say you won't lose by this, or whether you're not allowed to do it, the mishnah doesn't. Okay. Tan Rabbanan. Mase benachla de leka de hatsero shayota ben simai de shikin. There was an incident in which the courtyard of Yosef ben simai in shikin caught fire. Uvau and she gistera shall tipori lechabot. And the men of the governor of tipori, who was Roman, came to extinguish it, obviously not Jewish. Mipne she apotropos shall melechaya. Because Yosef, Yosef ben Simai was the king's treasurer. Belohi Nisan mitnei kavod Shabbat. However, he did not allow them. Ah, this is interesting. He did not allow them on account of the honor of Shabbat. Benasa lo nes v'yado geshamim v'chibur. The miracle occurred on his behalf and rain fell and put out the fire. La erev shiger lechol echad mehen shtei selayin. That night. He sent every member of the governor, of the garrison, to Sela. Vela Akil, Vela Ipar, 
Tosfos and the lieutenant Shebahen Hamishim. He sent him fifty. When the sages heard of this, this going on, they said, Lo lecha. He did not need to do that. Share shaninu nochri shebelechabot enomim lo kabe ve'al techabe. We learned in the Mishnah, the Gentile become to extinguish. They may not say to him extinguish, nor do not extinguish. That he, in fact, he did say do not extinguish, right? But, yeah, this is another example of a sense of... If a miracle occurs, it suggests that they were put out the fire. It suggests that he was approved of his action. But if he enforces the idea that lo bashamayim means heavenly approval means nothing, He's actually done both things, hasn't he? He's not only he's not only told them not to do it. But he's also given. The, he's also done the. He's given the. You won't lose out by this. Mm. Um, you won't lose by this. They, they didn't do anything. Hands on that. You can see the politics of it. If they came down from the fortress, rushed down to the valley, to put out his fire, and he said, "Don't do anything," you know, and they went away, and they got nothing. A, if there's another fire, he needs to that they may not come. B, if there is no other fire, there's a stingy, bloody Jew. Mm. Yeah. This way there's a political aspect to it, and a political aspect. Because, yeah. you know, if it comes out of the gems, you've got soldiery on the side, an officer on the side, I can think of a perfect comparison in art society. Perfect. The country fire authority. They're volunteers. And you have a small fire on your property out in the country. They come out and you say, it's alright, I've already put it out. You can go, you know what you do? You give them a slab of beer. You wouldn't let them go away. Oh, okay. Thanks very much. Well, we might not be so kind next time. Yeah. Or actually, we we might actually have second thoughts about doing the same thing for other people. Exactly. So, a touch of generosity never hurts. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And and perfect. No good deed goes unrewarded. Mm-hmm. They came to help. Yeah. Even if they didn't, they still came. I can't just say that once it goes unpunished. Yeah, depends on the uh, perspective, right? Aval katan she belachabod en shomin lot mitne she shvitato alehim. However, a man who comes to extinguish, I may not listen to him because he's resting, is their responsibility. Shamat mina. Shall we conclude from this? If a miner is eating nevela, oh, there you go, the word katan is male. Shall we conclude from this? Um, if a miner is eating nevela meat, uh, nevela meat is, um, is it's not just not hectic, nevela is. Um, it was right. It was killed. It was meat that was killed without proper ritual mm-hmm. slaughter, without proper kashrut. Beitin mitzuvin alav lehafrisho. The court is enjoined to separate him, so they have to tell him. They have to separate him from the nevela. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. 
The Katan Ha is still a Jatavir, with a minor who acts on behalf of his father's interest. So, the minor in this case, in the case of the Mishnah, is a minor who's a, a child of a parent whose house is on fire, or something like that. Dichvata Gabe Nafri, and the parallel regarding the Gentile, Deka Avid Ladate de Israel, is where he's acting on behalf of the Jews' interests. Mishere, is it permitted for a Gentile who's acting on behalf of the Jews' interest? So is it permitted to allow him to act? Nafri Ladate de Nafshe Avid, a Gentile always acts in his own self interest. Uh, that's not... That's Go right. ahead. Please tell we me. We that the Gentile is acting of his own volition. That is, he's doing this out of his own desire to do it. It doesn't say... It doesn't mean self interest. The Hebrew words are denafshe, nefesh, yeah. avid. Or veg, as in so like a slave, his own, or a worker. So his, his own soul is work. Of his own position, work. In accordance with his own desire. What I'm getting at, uh, care, careful about. All of them are Jews. People wear black, but non Jews only do But they're incapable of doing anything out of generosity. And I know these persons do the same. Yes, that's Let's go back. So, what about the Christian Zionists? The Christian Zionists. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, the Zionists are hoping to bring on the last day when the Jews will battle the Antichrist and his supporters, and most of them will be killed in the process, and the remainder, the remaining. Minority will acknowledge Yoshua as being the true Messiah. So, you know that that's a, a theological thing. It's not they're not doing it to make money. That's they're just hoping that when the Messiah comes, second coming, um, we'll all change our minds. Those of us who survive will change our minds, Maybe. and those of us who haven't survived will be instrumental in destroying. Ah. Mishnah. So Cost it's a win-win situation for them. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Apparently, the Israel has Israel has as much oil as Saudi Arabia. Coming off the coast. Yeah, or in shale. Uh, underground in shale, and they're starting to mine it or, or extract it, extract the oil through whatever process they use. It's always been possible. In Australia, we spent uh, back in the 60s, actually, we were extracting oil from shale. Yeah. But it's very, it's very expensive. So apparently there's this new technolo yeah. technology that makes it very efficient. And then they've got the gas field. Yeah. 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 It said that the most unbelievable thing could happen, and that is we'll be exporting to the Arab countries one day. Yeah.
Kofin Kara al Gabe Haner, we may invert a bowl over a lamp. Bishul Shalote Choz Bakora, in order that it not catch onto the beam, so not catch something on fire in the house. As long as you don't extinguish the flame. The altar shall katan, and you can also invert it over the feces of a child, the al akrav shalotisha, or over a scorpion so it doesn't sting. I was just thinking that's similar to putting the goat's blood on the chest. Yeah, 100%. Sounds like it. Because the candle for the lamp will go out. Oxygen. So can we put a goat skin over a scorpion? No, 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 of uh, came, the, in, the incident of the scorpion came before Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai in Arav, which is a Galilean city. Bamar, Hoshash, Hosh, Hoshashani lo mechatat. And he said, I fear for him that there might be a chatat. I'll just give you a little bit of a trapping. And now from the village close to Tsipori, where Rabban Yohanan ben Zakkai lived for 18 years. According to the Talmud, it was not a place of Torah study, and during his entire time there he was only asked two halakhic questions. <laughs> this is one of them. Which is cited here, and... Gemara, Rav Yehud of Rav Yirmiya Barav of Rav Hanan Barav Barava Ikla Iklau Lave Abin Demin Nash Neshikia Rav Yehuda Rav Yirmiya Barava and Rav Hanan Barava exited the home of Abin from Neshikia La Ravio Dava Rav Yirmiya Barava Um Rav Yehuda and Rav Yirmiya Barava Yetu Lehu Uryata They Brought couches to recline on. The Rav Hanan Barava lo ayetule, but for Rav Hanan Barava they didn't bring a couch. Ashkeche masne le livre. Rav Hanan Barava found Rav in teaching Mishnah to his son. King Sanders. Rav Hanan was insulted and got angry with his host. The here. Because he was not brought a couch? Yes. Yeah. So, during the visit, Rav Hanan Barava found Rav Avin teaching Mishnah to his son. The, so he, he taught, Ba'al so'a shal katan mipnei katan and Over the feces of a child because of the child, so you can put a bowl over there, uh, so the child doesn't get more dirty from the feces. Amale, Rav Hanan Barava said to Rav Avin, Avin. Shatya Matne Shkuta Livne. I've been the full teacher's foolishness to his son. Balohi Atma Mochenet Lichlavim. Why? That very excrement itself is prepared for the dogs. The dogs who eat. The Chitema de la Chazia le Metmo. And perhaps you will say. It was not fit for the dog uh, from yesterday. Apparently, an object that is fit for consumption by a dog may be carried. So why need one cover the feces if you can remove them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, remove it for a... The full So, if the excrement was done prior to Shabbat, it would be considered muktzah as well. 
Probably, yeah. The Tanya. Why? It was stored in a Baraisa. Narot hamoshkin umayanot hanovin harei hen kiragle koladam. Flowing streams and gushing springs are like the feet of any person, meaning they're permitted to be trans transported. I like the feet of all people who draw from the spring and yeah. wells. But the idea being that the water yeah. is probably outside the boundaries of the world before Shabbat, right. and then during Shabbat. Ah. Yeah, and we might have uh, our implication that because it wasn't prepared there before Shabbat, you can't draw it out. But you, uh, that doesn't apply in the case of water. You can draw water out of water and source it. Because it's just the nature of water to move. But if it's from a well, yeah, but it doesn't mean to say you can go out on Shabbat take water from the well in the public domain and bring it no, back no. to your house? No. No? You don't need to worry about the well that you've got. I You don't need to worry about saying, I can't draw the water out of this well because the water that's in it now is not the water necessarily that was in it before Shabbat. Even though the world can have water. Is there a halakha about this? Uh, rivers that flow. Flowing water in rivers and wells is considered to come from within the Shabbat boundaries of the people who draw water from them. Even if their source is beyond the Shabbat boundaries, it is permitted to draw river and well water on Shabbat and on the You can go, the, you can go outside and take water, bring water back in. Yeah. From the courtyard, or if the water flows. Oh, Rishi Karabin? Rishi Karabin, I should imagine the river may flow beside your house. Uh, remember, we, did, we learned something about water not being, this is some way back, water is not considered to be a Rishi Karabin. Remember there were all sorts of things about drawing water onto the boat? I remember that. And marking it off. And yeah. If you were pouring it in, you ran it down the side of the boat. Can I read this? Yeah. Go ahead. Ordinarily it is forbidden under the Tukum laws to move even an ownerless item on the Shabbat. Or Yom Tov. More than 2,000 amot from its resting place at the onset of the day. In this case, however, since the waters were in motion at the onset of the day, they do not acquire any legal resting place, and they remain without any tchum restrictions for the entire Yom Tov or Shabbat. Thus, any person can transport these waters on Yom Tov like his feet, meaning as far as he himself is permitted to travel. That's what it, that's why it brings in. That's kind of hard, that's the Ela Kesi Atne, but how then should I teach the Mishnah to him? Ravavinas Rav Hanan. Ema al soa shel tarnegolim mipne katan. Say, you can invert the bowl over the feces of chicken because of the child. So the child won't come to touch the chicken feces. And there's a little note in the thesis of the child. That Hanan understood that this phrase should not be taken literally. Rather, it is referring to any thesis that a child might touch from there that the lie becomes dirty. The interpretation in the Jerusalem Talmud is that this refers to soft thesis, which will make a child dirty if he touches them, but which would otherwise be suitable with the So the Gemara asks, "The Tefuk le'ed the Havegara shall re'iv 
But let it emerge to him because uh, so about the chicken poo, which is muksa. Let it emerge to him that you're permitted to move it because it is a vessel of excrement. He, he translates that because it is like a chamber pot of food. Right. So the rabbis permit moving it because it's repulsive. Yeah. The chi tema garaf shall re'i agav mana'ein. And perhaps you'll say that in, you'll say that a vessel with a vessel of excrement uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Now I'll never forget that. Thanks, Peter. Uh, so perhaps you'll say, uh, for a vessel of excrement, where you're mo- uh, where you're moving it. Uh, because it's like moving a vessel, then yes, you're allowed to permit it. It's permitted. If or gufe, look. But the excrement itself, no. The ha havu akbar the ishtaka the ishtar maki the rabashi. Why there was the mouse, the dead mouse. That was found among the spices of Ravashi. Vamalego nekotu betsut betsutite beachkuha. Ravashi told them, take hold by its tail and remove it. See it. Just the clue. Would that have been on Shabbos? Would that have been on Shabbos? Something like that. Oh. Ah, so that's so moving the dead mouse by the tail is like removing the chicken feces without the pot. What's One of eight rodents or reptiles listed by the yeah listed by the Torah whose carcasses transmit tuma. The sheriff is an apa So my question arises again: unless you have goyish servants, which is quite possible, in which case it wouldn't have been a problem. Okay. So the Asha, the Ashpa, so we're actually talking about chicken feces in a trash pile. You've got in a garbage dump, trash pile. So if it's like, we actually we, we discussed this as well, where you in your courtyard you have a little rubbish heap or something, and if there is feces in that, you can move it on covers, I think. Uh, and we, we're going to get to that point. Uh, ah, the katan, the ashka, ah, oh, lovely. My ba'ele. But what's a child doing in the trash heap? The chaser. It's in the, in, in the chaser, where the, in the courtyard where the children are. Chaser nami garaf shorei 
excrement in the courtyard is also a vessel of excrement. The ashba shebechatzer, what it's talking about is feces in a trash heap that is in a courtyard. The feces cannot be moved because they're in the trash pile, so you cover them with a bowl since children are in the vicinity. To which the child sometimes has access. Feces in a place designated for garbage are no more disgusting than their surroundings, and therefore it is prohibited to move the feces on that basis because it's happening. Let's go to the... Right. So the Allah Krav Shalotisha, or over a scorpion, so it doesn't sting. Ama Rabbi Yosho Ben Levi, Kolam Azikin Neheragin Beshabbat, all lethal creatures can be killed on Shabbat. Matthew, Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef challenged this, he gave a brisa. Hamisha Neheragin Beshabbat Ve'eluhen, five may be killed on Shabbat, and they are. The fly that is in the land of Egypt. There we are. That's it. The fly that is in the land of Egypt. Looks like a fly. This is the gas fly. Ah. Um, Poisonous. It bites people. The bite is quite painful and causes their mouth to swell. Oh, lovely. In fact, you can get infected as you get rather nice. But here are she, Shebeninve, the wasp that's in Ninve. Ninve is the capital of Assyria. Yes. Um, the Akra of Shebechad and the scorpion that's in Chad northern Iraq. The Nachash Shebe'eret Israel, snake in the land of Israel, the Chelev, Shotet, <coughs> a mad dog, Bechomakom in any place. So they knew about rabies, they just call it Kelev Shotet. Money. Who said this to Raisa? Ilema Rabbi Yehuda. If you say to Rabbi Yehuda, you would have said it's Rabbi Yoshua Ben Levi. So if you say that the Tana is Rabbi Yehuda, why? He says one is liable for a labor that is not needed for its defined purpose. So killing a creature in order to be rid of it is a biblical malacha which cannot be permitted unless one's life is in danger. Ah, and since there is no actual threat to life that would permit the performance that would the performance of Biblical Malata. Okay. Um Ella love Rabbi Shimon. Must not be rather the Tanner is Rabbi Shimon. Bahane for the Sharia Hrine Lot and these preachers he permits one to kill, but others, you're not allowed to. Amar Rabbi Yirmiya. Oman Neymar Lan, Daha Metar Tetahi. And who is to say to us that this is, that the Baraisa is correct? Oh. Yuma Mishab Shatahi, perhaps it's a corrupt version of the Baraisa. Amar Rav Yosef. Ana Matnina la ve Otivna la ve Ana Mitaretna Mitaretna la. I have this as a Baraisa in my text of Baraisas. And I've raised the challenge from it to Rabbi Yoshua Ben Levi's ruling, and I'll reconcile that ruling. There are two 
where the lethal creatures were chasing after him. And now, the opinion accords with all the Tanaim. Would you agree that's the way it, yeah. they're saying it? No, the answer to follow is Rabbi Yahushua ben Levi permitted killing all harmful creatures on Shabbat when they are running after them. That seems quite reasonable. The danger is real, and therefore it is permitted to kill them before the door. That seems very reasonable, yeah. right? Okay. Tanei Tana Kamei de Rava Bar Rav Huna, a teacher of Baraisi taught in the presence of Rava Bar Rav Huna, Ahoreg Nechashim the Akravim the Shabbat. If one kills scorpions on uh, snakes or scorpions on Shabbat, Ein Ruach Chasidim Nochachemenu, the spirit of Chasidim of pious ones uh, is not pleased with him. Because you killed it unnecessarily. Amalo, Rabbi Bar Rav Kuna said to the teacher, "But Otan Chasidim Ein Ruach Chachamim Nochamehem, and those pious ones, the spirit of the sages, ah, so now the spirit of the sages is not pleased with them." Ufliga de Rav Huna, and uh, Rav Huna disagrees. De Rav Huna chaze chaze lehachu gavra de kaka til zibura. De Rav Huna for a certain person who was killing a bee, Amale, a hornet. I mean, a bee is of course. The bee honeybee stings you, it'll die. And if I'm a kid, that gives you pain. The hornet can give you lots of pain, and if an apple Amale, Rav Hunas said to him, Shalei Mithu, Shalei Mithu, Lechulhu. Did you finish them all off? So he was going out, killing them willy nilly in a way. Well, That's what he was saying. One. Yeah. Uh, he Did you kill them all? Yeah. Tan Rabbanan. Nizdam nu lo nechashim ve akravim. If snakes and scorpions cross one's path, haragan ve yaduash nizdam nu lo lehorgam. If he killed them, one should not know that they crossed his path to kill them. Lo haragambia doshin is damnu lorgo venatelo nes min hashamayim. Even if he did not kill them, one should not one should know that they crossed his path to kill him. But a heavenly miracle is performed for him. Amarola, the tema rabba bar rav chana amar rabbi yochanan, and sometimes rabba bar 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 chana said in the name of rabbi yochanan. So the bright, the last part of the Raisa is where they, the snakes, were hissing at him. So of course it was when they were touched. So if a snake slithers over your foot and doesn't give you a bath, that's the situation. There's been a miracle on your behalf. I think that's the sort of thing. On this translation. Amar Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana. Pama Fadna Falechad Bebeit So a poisonous snake fell into the study hall. Bamad Nibati Echad Barako and a certain Nebatean. Who was Jewish? Rose up and killed it. Amar Rabbi, Haga Bo Keyosebo. Rabbi said one similar to it has struck it down. The snake killed the snake. Yes. And here's a footnote. This can be understood as encouragement. The person killed the snake that sought to harm someone like him. On the other hand, ah, that's encouragement. 
uh, encouragement to kill the snake. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't agree with this bit. But there's, on the other hand, it can be interpreted as derision. The snake was killed by someone comparable to the snake. And that's the way... That's the way I read. That's the way I read this uh, about the snake. I don't see how the first interpretation can apply. No. Well, that's how you can liken someone to a snake. Maybe using the word nakash? Maybe na- there, there was a, a good nakash that was called when people were bitten by the snakes and they looked upon yeah. the Maybe he was being likened to copper. So, uh, Nakash and the Soshe. Who would have asked to eat the top of things? That could be. Maybe. So you can read it both ways. Oh, yeah. Because they were one like it killed yeah, yeah. it. One like it. Ah, oh, no. That was that's good. Tashma, come learn the Rabbi Abba. The read the Rabbi. Bar Abba Rabbi Zera Havu Yatri Akila Deve Rabbi Yanai. For Rabbi Abba, the son of Rabbi Siya Bar Abba, and Rabbi Zera was sitting on the porch of Rabbi Yanai's house. Nachak Milta Mide Nayehu. The matter came up between them. But Umi Neme Rabbi Yanai, then quite Rabbi Yanai. Mahu, La Rog Nachashim, the Akrabim, the Shabbat. What's the law? Uh, whether you're allowed to kill snakes or scorpions on Shabbat? Amalehu. This is very interesting, actually, because we actually have plans on a regular basis to go out to the country over uh, Shabbat. Yeah, we, we can do that. Yeah. So Shabbat just for Yeah. And this kind of is relevant. The relevance is so much. We're going back to Talmudic times. Feel to go. Yeah. Precisely. Um. Hit. Hit for the door. <laughs> I think it's hard. Amalehu, uh, he told them, Sirani Horeg, I kill even wasps on Shabbos. Nachash for Akrav lo kosheken, a snake or scorpion, all the more so. So. the opposite view. Because it says here, we just read that um, it says here that we can conclude that Rebbe was praising the Nabataean for killing the oh, snake on the Shabbat. <laughs> Perhaps Rabbi Yonah's position is considered indicative of, Rabbi, of Rebbe's because Rabbi Yonah was his disciple and a member of his court. Duma lefi tumo. Perhaps it was an innocent trotting upon. Dama rapuna, hurry rabia buddha. Rock dorso lefi tumo. If spit is on the ground, you can tread on it innocently. What does that mean? Oh, rubbing up. Rubbing spittle into an earthen floor results in leveling out holes or other regu- irregularities. Yeah, 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 Abba bar mat hadeku abba mar man yumi abba mat kebe deve reish galuta zuze. So abba bar mata, also known as abba bar man yumi, owed money to members of the reish galuta's household. Ayate ayate yuhu ka matarele. So they brought to him. Oh, they brought him. And were tormenting him to pay the money. Harvest Shete Ruka, 
there was some spit on the ground on Shabbos this is Amalehu Reish Baluta Ayetu Mana Sechifu Ilave Reish Baluta said to them bring a vessel and invert it over the spit Amalehu Lotchirichtu Tirichitu yeah Tirichitu Abba Barmata says to him you don't need to do that Hachi Amar Rav Yehuda Rosh Dor Sole Pitamo Thus did Rav Yehuda say spit can be trod upon innocently. Amal Torva Mirabanan Hu Shivkuhu. The Rish Lusa said to them, He's a young rabbinical scholar, leave him alone. Don't torment him anymore. So they saw that he was a scholar and they said, Stop harassing him. The candelabras of Rabbi's household may be moved on Shabbat. Are we talking about what can be taken in one hand, or the bigger ones that require two hands. And this is the typical and the last one. A long one. And it's was made of different pieces that are put together. So what's the question? The question is about the candle libraries being moved on Shabbat. Yes. And this is this sort of candle library. Uh, the, uh, just the, an, the answer is Amalo, he said like those of your father's house, which are small. Which are large. Which are large. That's what it is But a large one may not be moved on Shabbat because one said in his place with the intent that it remain there. That's what Rashi says. Although this reason is advanced by Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef, the Gemara there concludes that such setting in place is not a reason to prohibit it, to prohibit moving your temple on Shabbat. Because of this consideration, some Rishonim reject Rashi's explanation and explain that Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana meant, like those of your father's house, which are large. Even these may be moved on the Shabbat. See Tosafot. Here, candlesticks is the house of Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana. One may not carry a candelabra and the component parts on Shabbat, whether large or small. Ah. This prohibition the halakha includes candelabra that appear to have component parts. It is permitted to carry a lamp that does not come apart, like the candlesticks of Rabbi Yehuda.